So when you start working on some really large projects, and I've, I've done some projects that are arena size and some of the West End theatre shows I've done are, are incredibly complex and have lots of scenery and lighting and automation, um, there's only really one way to properly manage all that information and that's through layers. So this lesson is all about how you can manage your layers effectively. Uh, you can change attributes such as colour and the naming to try to make it work efficiently. Um, when you get lots of information, you know, such as channel numbers and uh, and different fixture types, you might want to control how you can turn them on and off just to make it easier to work the model just so you can select the right bits and turn them on and off. Uh, I actually have a, a principle that I apply to when I'm naming things that comes from the games industry. Uh, I try to give everything a prefix and a suffix. So the prefix might be uh, like a letter. So um, for instance, uh, M underscore for model, um, S underscore for stage, P underscore for permanent for any permanent scenery. And then the name of the object. So it might be uh, borders, for instance. And then a suffix, which is uh, underscore uh, V1 for version one, um, for instance. So this is a sort of principle that can help manage your, uh, your labeling. I also like to not have spaces in my, in my words. Um, I'll use what they call camelback uh, or camel hump lettering. So if I wanted to write uh, man on bed, it will be capital M, capital O, capital B uh, for the three words, but no spaces in between. It just keeps everything nice and neat. It does look nice. I'm a little bit OCD, so it's lovely seeing all that uh, labeled up nicely in your, in your layers list. And it may seem a bit anal, but actually these things make it really easy to find things quickly. Uh, the reason I do this is not so much just for when I'm building the model, it's for when there's a designer in front of me, uh, they're sitting there doing some programming, they're trying to work really quickly and you need to find something to turn off and on again really quickly or you need to, to find an object so you can deselect it or you want to freeze it so you can work on something that's on top of it. Having everything really neatly labelled uh, and easy to find makes a massive difference to how efficient you can be as a WYSIWYG operator when you're working in a design environment. Okay, lesson eight, and we're looking at the layer database. So I've got my two men here, we'll leave those there, they're quite useful. The library browser, if you didn't see it earlier, is down here. Um, you go to, sorry, the layer database down here. You click on layer database and we get our layers. If you can't find it, you need to click on this button up here. This will open and close that tab. If you can't find this window, right click into a blank space and make sure that you've got layer selected. Make sure you don't confuse layer and scene. Scene is the other box next to it. It looks exactly the same, it brings up a different window, which we're going to look at later. You need to have this one, it's layers. Now, this drop-down menu here will have a list of all of the layers that are in your layer manager. So you can get rid of this later and still select layers through this. But while we're creating them, we need to be in this space here. The idea is, is that you've got your, your, your main layer, which is created automatically. You click the green button here, we create a new layer. It gives you a little dialog box. So what we're going to call it, we're going to call it Man 1. And I'm going to cover groups later, but you could choose a colour for it if you wanted to make this one say pink to make it really clear. We can click Make Current. Make Current is this little tick here. It means that this is now the, the master layer. So when you build anything new, it will go into that, that layer. And you can see that the, the cursor's changed colour to show what layer we're working with. That's really helpful to make it really clear that we're not working on uh, the wrong layer. You know, if, if you're always working on a, uh, you know, a red layer, and you know that's your working layer. If your cursor goes a different colour, you know you're you're building on the wrong thing. So we built man one. Let's build man two. Do the same thing. And I'm going to call. I'll make this a blue. There you go. So now I've got two, and now my cursor's gone blue because that's turned it to make current. If you want to make a uh, main current again, you click this tick. Anything new, you click. There it goes. Current. So I'll leave it on main. And just to be clear, the idea of this. Making current means if I draw anything now, it will appear on that layer automatically. So I'm just going to draw a circle here. And that is on this layer, main. Now I can't turn main off because it's a current layer. You can only turn off the layers that aren't active. So I'll make that one current and now I can turn off main. And you'll see that everything's turning off because at the moment everything is on the main layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my first man and I'm going to right click and go to properties. And we're going to go through the properties dialog in a lot of detail later, um, but just so you understand where the layer properties are in the dialog box, it's here. As soon as you come into the properties dialog in general, you've got main, man one, and man two. So every layer you create will appear here. You just highlight the layer you want it to be on. You can choose if you want to use the layer color. So here we're saying yes, so it's going to turn it pink, but we could override that and make it white. Uh, we can change the line weight, or we can, uh, I'll come to this later. Yeah, adding to axis, that's a completely different lesson. We can hit apply, 
and we should see that straight away. So now it's gone pink to say that he's turned, uh, turned on, on layer man one. Difference between apply and okay. Uh, apply, you can apply a setting, so I can change that to man two and hit apply again, and we don't lose our dialog box. But if you're happy with what you can do, just click okay, and it'll just apply those settings at the same time as closing the box. The same difference there. So let's do the same for man two. Okay, there you go. And now if I turn off man two, that layer turns off. If I turn off main, my circle turns off. And if I make man two active, I can now turn off man one, which is my pink layer. Now you've also got a feature called grouping, which is really handy. So I'm gonna make main my active layer again. Let's say I want a group that's just the men together. What I do is I select them both at the same time. And there's a tool here called new group. I click that, I get a little name, so I can call it men. There you go, men. And I can do a different group for, for, for women, if I've used the, uh, the female mannequins rather than the male mannequins. And now I can turn on off that group as a whole. Now, you may have noticed next to visible, I so I've got some more options there as I drag the slider across. Um, you can also grab the pane and just pull the whole thing out if you want to see it all in one go. You've got a few more things there. Um, the main one is the ed editable feature. If I click that, it's now locked those layers. So I can still see them, but I can't select them now. Nothing I do will select those, but I can still select the circle because that layer is still editable. So I find that once I've built all of my objects, I'll just whack that on, keep it, let, keep it visible, and that way I'm not selecting stuff I shouldn't be when I'm working on another layer. Uh, here you can change the line white and uh, grayscale will just change the colour of it if you just want to disappear in the background. So it's sort of a kind of useful, it's quite useful to, to tag things and add descriptions so you can refer to things later, what things are meant to be. Uh, but the main, main objects here are the naming, the colour, visible and editable. And that is the, uh, the layer database.